Greetings to all learners. Myself Sharda Devre, Associate Professor, Government College of Pharmacy, Amravati, Maharashtra. Welcomes you to the lecture 21, Preclinical Evaluation, means in vitro, in vivo, ex vivo evaluation under the week 5, Safety, Efficacy and Toxicity of Traditional Plant Drugs in a Self-Paced Course, Indian Traditional Medicinal and Aromatic Plants. For the traditional medicinal and aromatic plants, there is a thousands of years of evidences that they are effective in various diseases and disorders and they are actually the primary health care for the human being as well as the animals. But due to the advancement in the knowledge and technology, there is a need of the uh, various documentary evidences and the more scientific proofs that these particular traditional drugs can be effective in that particular disease or indications. And there are uh, various studies to uh, develop such a scientific evidences for our traditional medicinal plants. And these are uh, differentiated into the, or uh, these are classified into the in silico studies, in vitro studies, ex vivo studies, and in vivo studies. In silico means the study which is on a computer where on a computer the various uh, body receptors which are actually the proteins that are there uh, certain targets are developed that are artificial targets and then the molecules or chemical constituents from the traditional medicinal plants are evaluated on these receptors for the uh, particular type of the docking or that is particular type of the lock and key like the model how it uh, if uh, means uh, behave with the, that receptor or protein molecule and then how we can expect the results when we will use that particular drug in animals or um, human that is actually means that idea we get from the in silico designs and which is also called as a dry lab studies because everything is on a computer but it is uh, not every time uh, gives us the um, surety about the expected therapeutic effects so further it is the in vitro studies which is actually we have to perform into the test tubes or certain glasswares and uh, various chemical reagents or such a chemical reactions that are mimicking the uh, therapeutic efficacy like that of for example antioxidant effect where various uh, oxidative uh, species that is a uh, free radicals are generated in the um, test tubes in the glasswares through the chemicals and then certain reagents are added to see whether there is any scavenging effect or not means color change or color intensity or the turbidity this type of the effects are observed in the in vitro studies. Then next it is the ex vivo studies as in vitro studies are also not 100% uh, full proof for any type of the therapeutic indication or efficacy. So uh, further it is the ex vivo studies where various organs from the animals are removed or cells like that of uh, for cancer the cancer cells are removed and then activity of the traditional medicine plants uh, on that cells or on that organs is observed to assure the exact effect of the drug for the desired therapeutic effect. Then last one preclinical study it is an in vivo study where various animals are utilized. Generally mouse and rats are very popular but even monkeys, dogs or uh, for the further utilization even the uh, domestic animals like the uh, horse or cow these are also utilized. Even the uh, bees are also fish are also utilized for the in vivo studies where actually these traditional medicinal plant their extracts or isolated phytochemicals are given orally or through the other route like the topical route or through the inhalation these are given to the animals and then their effects are observed either behavioral or blood studies are done or various bi biochemical parameters are evaluated or various histological studies are done so that to confirm the therapeutic efficacy whether the traditional medicine plants are anti-inflammatory or having the anti-cancer effect or they are having anti-diabetic effect whether they are useful in arthritis or inflammation anything whatever the indication which is mentioned in the ancient text of Ayurveda Da, Siddha, Yunani, Homeopathy or Soa, Rigba, that we can uh, confirm through this in combination with the in silico, in vitro, ex vivo and in vivo studies. 
in silico or computer aided drug designs are not uh, that much popular but nowadays uh, this is also expected that minimum use of the animal should be done and hence based on the available data the computer aided drug design is giving us the idea about the various uh, toxicity issues that can be further expected in animal or human studies of these traditional plants Preclinical studies are the combination of the in silico, in vitro, ex vivo and in vivo studies and in vivo studies actually involves the use of the animals for the various experiments. But these experiments should be done according to the certain guidelines and must be regulated by the certain committees. So, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development that is called as OECD has provided the guidelines for testing the chemicals on the animals while committee for the purpose of control and supervision of experiments on animals that is a CPCSCA committee that regulates whether these guidelines are getting followed or not. So uh, these guidelines particularly mention that how the animal should be uh, bred or raised and how it should be transported or purchased, how it should be dealed for the experiments, uh, how it should be store stored, what temperature should be maintained in their rooms, uh, what are the medical checkups, their duration, food material quality, water quality. So everything is mentioned. Then less and less uh, cruelty should be done while doing the experiments and minimum uh, animal should be utilized for the uh, desired uh, indication experiments. This committee that is a CPSCA committee need to guide the IAC that is an institutional animal ethics, ethics committee that how these experiments should be performed or approvals should be given after the detailed presentation. So learners uh, those who are interested in the animal studies they have to must uh, first uh, um, contact to the institutional Ethi uh, animal ethics committee that that is IEC committee and then submit the proposal with the title then how many animals are utilized what is the study exactly whether it is a toxicity studies or whether it is the study for the particular indication like anti-diabetic anti-inflammatory or uh, anti-alzheimer's or anti-parkinson's or uh, like anti-stress or what are the whatever the activity that need to be performed of the traditional medicinal plants and derived extracts or products on the animals so that protocol need to be provided how many animals what duration uh, the study will be carried out what facilities are available at the institutes who will be the investigator co-investigator everything need to be uh, mentioned and after the uh, detailed presentation, IC committee uh, gives the details or uh, approves the details and uh, submit it to the CPCA for further approval. So uh, these animal studies or such a type of the regulations are must uh, to help the uh, researchers to uh, follow the path of the um, some type of the ethics or morality or uh, the uh, less and less animal cruelty here i have uh, shown you the like uh, one image related for the wound healing activity and thus you can see from the photos how it is uh, uh, painful to the animals to go through all such a type of the experiments and these are the studies that are mentioned by the OECD guidelines or that are actually expected by the different guidelines either WHO, CDSCO or Ayush guidelines that need to be done for the toxicity if the toxicity data is not available. In a previous lecture we have seen that if the uh, very authenticate documents are available related to the toxicity, safety and efficacy of the traditional medicinal plants then there is a no need to do all these studies. But if data is not available, indication is different, combination of the combination is different, extracts are different, then such a studies are required. So skin sensitization, dermal toxicity, ocular means eye toxicity, inhalations toxicity, oral toxicity, neurotoxicity, cytotoxicity, developmental which is called as a reproduction toxicity, then uh, it is also the genotoxicity. So there are the various toxicity, their assays, their procedures are mentioned in these guidelines and that learners can follow if they have to utilize it. 
we have learned about the uh, preclinical study and the various studies that are considered as a part of a preclinical study that is in silico in vitro ex vivo and in vivo and uh, animal studies requirement for the in vivo studies that is the through oecd guidelines cpsca or iac uh, committee's role now we will learn about the who research guidelines for evaluation of the safety and efficacy of herbal medicines actually uh, no medicine is a safe not the allopathic or not the uh, herbal or uh, traditional medicine uh, because uh, it, it means dose defines the toxicity or therapeutic efficacy it was in early 90s it was found that the there were the various drugs that was started showing the uh, chronic or accumulative type of the toxicity as uh, effects and uh, such effects are even the teratogenic like the birth defects due to the thalidomide insertion and hence uh, there was a rise in the role of the various preclinical and clinical studies to understand the uh, toxicity of such a drugs and same need to be get applicable to the herbal medicines also because the herbal medicines are also found to be uh, toxic uh, sometimes due to the wrong use or due to the long duration use or due to the high doses and hence such a guidelines were developed by the who these guidelines is actually having the different content and that is the first it is related to the general consideration that actually what is herbal medical research what are the different aspects that need to be get involved means either traditional uses or various uh, national uh, or international local regulations then research studies means uh, how many studies are already done on the uh, herbal medicines and what type of studies are these actually these are individual or institutional or this can be the multi center also literature background plays the very important role in case of the herbal medicines that is even in the case of the traditional medicine plants because this gives us the idea that how long this particular medicines are utilized and how safe this is what are the evidences for their quality safety and efficacy then protocol preparations either for the safety research or for the efficacy research what type of the considerations or uh, information is required that is mentioned here then quality specification of plant material and preparation that we have done in many previous lectures that botanical identity plays the most important role then the label should be clear while utilizing its uh, means either in a raw form or in a preparation form of the medicinal plants then non clinical studies means either the Um, we have seen that either the in vitro in silico or ex vivo and in vivo studies what parameters what regulations what guidelines need to be followed how many animals should be utilized how protocol should be formed what duration uh, is uh, required for the different studies that is mentioned and actually uh, this particular guideline is also mentioning about the clinical trials that uh, uh, it is necessary Uh, to perform the clinical trials to generate the more scientific evidences uh, for the traditional as well as the herbal medicine traditional medicines means the medicines that are prepared according to the traditional text of the ayurveda siddha yunani sova rigpa or homeopathy or uh, chinese medicine system and uh, that uh, there are no variations either in the part of the plant or method of the extract preparations or the combinations but if there is any type of the deviation from the uh, um, means either dose or either combinations or either uh, related to the doses form the route of administration then it becomes necessary to do the preclinical as well as the clinical studies then uh, using these guidelines that how it can be utilized by the individual researchers or institutes educational institutes research institute or industry personnel or common people for understanding it can be used then there are the anekjars one anekjar is that guidelines for the quality specification of the plant material and preparation which is explained in detail then guidelines for the pharmacodynamic and general pharmacological studies of the herbal medicines that how it is affecting to the body what type of the um, expectations are there 
of, uh, of the drugs effect on the body everything is mentioned then toxicity studies that are acute toxicity long term toxicity local toxicity special toxicity states like the mutagenicity carcinogenicity reproductive and development toxicity genesis which is uh, uh, test uh, which is also called as the teratogenicity so all these tests are need to be performed for the traditional medicinal plant as well as the herbal medicines if there are the no scientific evidences are uh, provided so uh, acute toxicity studies uh, or uh, long term toxicity studies can be oral or local also or uh, through the inhalation also so in this way these guidelines are uh, found to be really helpful uh, to get the general idea about uh, the uh, various parameters that need to be followed before considering the drug is safe before considering the drug is not toxic and then further for its various indications next guideline is the ayush uh, guideline that is ayush ministry indian ayush ministry guideline for safety toxicity evaluation of ayurvedic formulations and in this guideline also there is introduction then general research guidelines and methodologies for the drug development at a glance means various uh, formulations how need to be developed or uh, what uh, special considerations should be taken uh, for the development and then for the utilization then toxicity studies are mentioned where single toxicity study and repeated dose toxicity studies for the reproductive and development toxicity studies special toxicity studies genotoxicity carcinogenicity then local toxicity for the topical and then further the glossary there are also the annexures that is the uh, guidelines for the issue of the license with respect to the ayurveda then guidelines for the regulation of the scientific experiments on animals which is same like that of the uh, cpsca the uh, sorry oecd and then cpsc guidelines for the laboratory animal facility then experts involved in the development of the guidelines and consultative process so i us also expect that uh, there is a need of the some type of the toxicity studies and that need to be done to generate the more and more scientific evidences for our traditional uh, plants repeated toxicity studies are very important because uh, if the medicine is utilized only for 2 3 days or 4 5 days then it's okay but if it is utilized for more than 2 weeks or up to the 2 weeks then there is a need of the uh, repeated dose study because uh, for 4 5 days might be we will not able to see the toxicity or other effects on the body or major organs of the body but when we are giving it uh, for the chronic diseases for the one month two month or some of the medicines need to be take for the lifetime then it becomes necessary that how these drugs are affecting to the major organs or to the various body parts and what type of the toxicities their side effects are there how the or which type type of the dose is uh, required and then further we need to uh, expect the, um, how it should be get tackled so this particular table is giving us the idea that uh, what is the administration period for the toxicity studies based on the expected period of the chemical use either single use or repeated use for one week to four weeks or repeated week uh, uh, repeated use for the six months or long term repeated administration for more than 6 months so according to that the toxicity studies duration is also expected to uh, get the uh, exact uh, pattern of the toxicity so thus these guidelines are also helpful these are covering the major aspects uh, so that we should get the safe medicine from our traditional knowledge next is the same part from the ayush guidelines where how we should consider the requirement of the non clinical safety data and requirement of the non clinical efficacy data for the drugs that are mentioned in the ayurveda siddha yunani or for the doses forms uh, that are from the dnc act um, whether ingredients and indications are as per text then we don't need any non clinical safety data or non clinical efficacy data but if the ingredients are as per text but indications are not as per ancient text means whatever the books of the ayurveda siddha yunani homeopathy so are if it is indication is not mentioned in that then uh, there is a no need for the non clinical safety data but non clinical efficacy data is required safety data means toxicity data is not required but non clinical efficacy data is required means whatever the indication for that to prove this data is required 
then next uh, continuation to that if the uh, patent or proprietary drugs that are mentioned in the drugs and cosmetics acts and they are containing the aqueous extract or hydroalcoholic extract then uh, its ingredients are as per text then there is a, a certain type of their uh, text uh, uh, proofs are there for its indications that is a textual rational indication means use or therapeutic efficacy then the preclinical safety data and preclinical efficacy data not required but if the extract is uh, other than that of the aqueous or hydroalcoholic extract then ingredients are as specified and indication is as specified but still uh, the uh, toxicity means safety data is required that is for the oral preparations then um, is for oral preparations it is single dose toxicity repeated dose toxicity reproductive and development toxicity genotoxicity carcinogenicity and then photoallergy or uh, dermal toxicity allergenicity hypersensitivity so depending upon the utilization and again the efficacy data is also required means toxicity as well as efficacy data is required if the solvent is other than that of the aqueous or hydroalcohol and then next it is mentioned that if the patent or proprietary drugs as defined under section 3h containing any of the ingredients of the schedule even of the dnc act then as per text if its ingredients are there and indications as claimed in specified as per the text then again the safety as well as the toxicity data are required or need to be generated means this type of studies are required here it is a ghs classification criteria for acute toxicity which is called as a globally harmonized system classification where the acute toxicity that is oral dermal and then inhalation through the gases vapors or dust and mist are divided into the category 1 to 5 and these are dose dependent so ld50 or lc50 values are determined lethal minimum lethal concentration minimum minimum lethal dose that are calculated and then this uh, category wise the medicinal plants or extracts and preparations are uh, classified then there is a certain dose determination criteria where no observed effect level or no observed adverse effect level lowest observe effect level or lowest observed adverse effect level are determined and that are called as no l no l low l or low l so this uh, particular um, values actually helps to understand that how much the drugs or how is exactly which dose of that medicinal plant extract or preparation is showing us the efficacy or showing the adverse effect or showing the uh, toxicity like that so in this lecture 21 where preclinical evaluation in vitro in vivo and ex vivo studies are there along with the in silico designs and these preclinical studies help uh, us uh, further to uh, go for the clinical studies or not because uh, such a data is very important to understand the safety toxicity the dose and then the efficacy of the um, traditional medicine plants and derived Uh, products so who as well as iush guidelines surely help us to understand that exactly for which uh, medicinal plants which extracts for which combinations we have to do the uh, toxicity studies or other type of the animal studies and uh, efficacy studies thank you